Hello and welcome to King Cole. This is part of our series of how-to videos and today we're going to look at the jelly bean yarn. Um, we're going to look at how to cast on, um, what happens when you knit and what happens when you purl and then how to cast off. So let's get started. Right. I personally prefer to use a bamboo needle with this it's quite a slippy yarn and I've found with the metal ones that you're at risk of it just sliding out but not everybody has bamboo not everybody likes them use whatever your preference is okay so let's get started now with this to do the first cast on I like to do a loop and then this is it's a little bit fiddly but you need to pull that through so that's your in effect you slip knot for the first one. Now I then like to do a twist. The bobble sits in the middle, you're only ever working with this. And then I go as though I'm going to knit the stitch but then add it on. So you've now got two loops there. Then again twist needle in, knit it and add it on. Just another little point, I do prefer the bamboo needles, I find they're a lot less slippy for this kind of yarn. So I'm going to put about four sets on and then um, I'll show you where you are with your first set. Now for the final one, you just twist one on. So what you want to end up with is one at either end and then pairs in the middle. And this little section of yarn will always knit two stitches at the moment. This is how we're doing our patterns. So I'm, I'm showing you this method because this is the most useful for you for, as far as we're concerned. So then you actually do knit one stitch and you're then working your way back across each time knitting two that is a piece of yarn. Your first row is always a little bit more fiddly than the rest. Um, it's quite a methodical yarn this one, you have to knit with it fairly steadily. final set of pairs and then knit just one stitch with the last one and now you've got cast on and you've got all your pairs plus you one at either end. Right so what I'm going to show you now is the effect that you get when you knit with it. So I'm going to knit a couple of rows and show you what we achieve and then we're going to show you something just slightly different. So as I said with this one, don't try and rush it because the last thing you want to do is drop a stitch. They are quite tricky to pick up if you drop a stitch. So each time make sure that your bobbles are sitting nice and even between. Um, you don't want to try and knit with the bobble or pull it through anything. That would um, That's not what you need to do. I will also mention it's quite self tensioning is this yarn because of course whatever you do and whatever size needle you choose to use the bobbles are always going to stay the same size and you've still only got that distance of yarn so it can't make a massive difference to your tension only a very slight one. Okay. So I'm just going to pause there and show you so that you can see what we've ended up with uh, bobbles down either side and like pairs so you've actually got a double sided item. They do also, although they look a little bit uneven there, they do actually smooth out as you knit more rows. So don't worry if you look a little bit uneven at this point. But that's what you get when you're just knitting. I'm now going to show you what happens when you start to purl as well. Because um, when you purl it does make a difference to what you achieve. So 
normal purl stitch. We'll just take two or three rows for you to be able to see the difference. Always, you can just give your bobble a bit of a tug if you need to. So that was my curl row. Now I'm going to work another knit row. Work one more pearl row and show you what's happening. So this is the equivalent of doing stocking stitch. Um, just a bit more difficult to see what what you're doing than with a, a standard yarn. So that's another pearl row. Now, what you find when you revert from, so these were all just done every row knit. When you start to put a pearl row in there, all the bobbles go to one side. So you've actually almost got a flat back and you can see your stitches quite clearly. You could use that as a feature on something, but also it would work quite well for cushions because you've got a thicker front then and a smoother back. And you're not, if you were to put that in a cushion done this way with all knitting, you end up with a lot of bobbles kind of lost behind it. So, right, what I'm going to do now is just organise this a bit differently and then I'm going to show you how to cast off. Now we're going to look at an option for casting off. This is one of the options and it's the one that we've gone with, um, but there are other options out there, so you know, do feel free to try other things. So what we're trying to do is cast this off but without it concertinaing too much because of course you still have to have the bobbles in between. They don't give you the same stretch as you would get in a normal yarn. So I tend to not knit the first one but you can knit the first one if you like and you'll see why in a minute. If you then knit the second stitch, pick that one up and cast off in the normal way but now we're only doing one stitch with every section of flat yarn in between. So the next stitch, I'm going to knit it. You kind of have to pinch it this time. Now, if you're not careful, the bobbles don't go evenly. So at that point, I push my bobble through here so that it's at the front and then pick up and pass over. For the next one, I'm going to knit one stitch with one piece of thread, pick the other up and put that over and this time I've left the bobble at the back. Knit the next one, then push that through to the front, pass it over. You can see you're getting a nice long loop at the top. And knit it over leaving the bobble there at the back. Again this time push the bobble through. So it's one to the back, one to the front. That one stays at the back. Push that through. Over then the last one. So you do end up with one at the end, and it's quite a neat cast off because this is, as you know, quite an odd yarn to cast off. 
then I'd cut off with about three bobbles to go, thread it through that loop to secure, and then you just weave those ends in as best you can with your finger. And that's it, all done. Right, so hopefully you found that informative. Um, if you like what you've seen on the jelly bean, then if you want to click on the link on that's going to appear on the screen about now, then it'll take you to the rest of the range and you can have a look and see what colours and things we do in that. Thanks for watching. Bye.